Find recording. Da, 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 da. All, right. All right, it's recording. Hey guys, this is Off the Runner, a Gundam and Gunpla podcast. We are back for episode five. As always, I'm Envious Cosplay, Marvin, along with. I'm DJ Provoke, I'm Gilbert. I am Bucket Knight 359 Edwin. All right, uh, oh, first of all, um, do you guys hear like a fan in the background? Mm, no. Gender. Okay, good. Okay, because I have my fan on in, in the room here, so just wanted to make sure that's not on your audio. Alrighty. So, been about two weeks, and not much has happened uh, in terms of, like, any new things concerning the upcoming film, Gundam Hathaway's Flash. At the moment, the only, quote, new Gundam series going on is still Build Divers Rerise. I still haven't continued my watching of it. <laughs> um, but that's pretty much the only thing new in terms of the anime. In terms of anything coming out, um, well, I'm looking at P Bandai right now uh, because I missed these last time. There's three high grade crossbone kits of the unit one, two, and three. So that's cool. Uh, let's see here. And I do have Gundam Info open right now, their website. And there's quite a few kits coming out for this month of June. Uh, some people I think I've seen have gotten their copies already, mostly the reviewers. It is the high-grade RX-78-2 Gundam Beyond a Global Edition. Um, Beyond Global meaning, uh, I think what Bandai has done, from what I've seen in photos, is that they are tweaking everything about the model kit's engineering. So it's going to take it, it to the extremes in terms of articulation. So that was the other kit that when when we were looking, um, I guess me and you had ordered the, the Origin kit uh, yeah. right around the same time. And that was the other kit that, that I had seen. Um, I just... I guess I just wasn't too impressed with what I saw. You know, I mean, I think the kits price were about the same. That, that pricing wasn't even a big deal. Yeah. It was more of the look of the actual, um, the, the model that I think that that's why I ended up going with the Origins kit. So. I see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same. Um, and it's, uh, in terms of what you're getting, the, the accessories, it's just the shield, beam rifle, as well as the uh, beam sabers. From the images that they show of the prototype, you're not getting a hyper bazooka with it either. Yeah. But in terms of the origin version, you get to pretty much change it up a bit. Because there's even mounted Gatling guns on the arms and the, the chest and the big shoulder cannon as well. And two different types of uh, beam rifle. So for me, I think... If you're not looking too much into articulation, but you want more parts and accessories, then go for the Origin Edition. Yeah. Yeah, I, I like the, um, just like the different poses, like the articulation that the Origins can do. So, so I just started building mine part. today, literally right before we got on call. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah uh, so far I have the, the torso and the head made and the, the thruster pack with the beam saber handles. Oh, well. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm going for the, what is, they're calling the middle type, which is like the, the one we see in the show. So, uh, like, um, I'm not going to go with the, the newer parts yet that show, like, the prototype aspect of the RX-78. Um, let's see. Scrolling down is another... Um, uh, it's an SD kit, but from Build Divers Rerise. It is the X Valkylander. Um, it has some pretty cool aesthetics. It's an SD kit. Um, it looks from the giant beam cannon gun and the the wings. It reminds me of Wing Zero Endless Vaults, <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> but yeah, it's very dragony. Yeah, <laughs> but you get what I mean with the the gun and the shield, right? Yeah, I see it. It, it looks yeah, yeah. It's it looks, very wing zero. Yeah, it does. Um, it's like if that's his animal form, kind of looks like a chicken. 
I mean, I know oh, it's not. Supposed, I know it's not supposed to be a chicken. I'm pretty sure it's some type of bird, Neo Bird Mode or something. It looks like a chicken. Yeah. That oh, is. speaking of that, speaking of um, a mobile suit looking like a bird, mm. I saw a tall geese meme. <laughs> I'm sending it now in the chat. In our in our Facebook chat. Hold on, I just sent it. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> he looks. I I don't know if you guys it's remember duck. like the old video game um called Joust. Um, no. He looks like that thing from Joust. Okay. <laughs> oh man. I, oh I, lord. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh, oh no. <laughs> Oh, it's a freaking goose. <laughs> it's a tall oh. geese. <laughs> oh my god, it made the t- it turned the tall geese into its name. Oh man, oh, that's, if the, that's comedy. If the it's three of us go see Brian Drummond at um at, what's it called? Animanga next year, because he is a still a confirmed guest, we gotta show him this image. <laughs> I I oh, think we'll get a kick out of it. Oh, no, no, I got an idea. Uh-oh. Edwin, since you're tall, let's dress you up as the tall geese. <sighs> oh, Jesus. Wow. <laughs> wow, Marvin. Um, It'll be that, a collab that, effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, You know, why not? Sure. Um, I mean, Brian it wouldn't, isn't it, it really down the, here much. It wouldn't be the craziest thing I've done. So, yeah, sure, why not? Cool. I wouldn't mind doing that. Alrighty, moving on. Um, we have a. Ah, huh, I don't recognize this Gundam at all, but uh, it is the SD Gundam Cross Silhouette Phoenix Gundam. It it straight up looks like a bird in its uh in its transformation though. It kind of reminds me of something that I saw from Gundam X, but yeah. I could have sworn there was, like, a red and white mobile suit in Gundam X that turned into a, a jet mode or something. There was. There was one of them that did. Because um, you had the X, you had the double X. And then you and had... The X divider. Yeah. And then you had... Yeah, there was one that did transform. And then there yeah. was one that was not heavy arms. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was basically, like, a blue heavy arms, but it wasn't. Yeah, and I know what you're talking about, too. Um, now it's in my head. I wonder if I can find it. Let's see. While Edwin looks for that, I'll move on. Um, the <laughs> next <laughs> kit is the high grade from Build Divers Rise. It is the 144 scale Wodum Pod. And uh, this, for those who are familiar, uh, May pilots that mobile armor. And it's pretty interesting. <laughs> Uh, the Wodom, I think, is a mobile armor from turn A, I think. But, uh, yeah, so the character, she pretty much uses that as her main mobile suit in Build Divers Rise. And then, oh, this is interesting. Uh, coming out June 27th of uh, this year, uh, there's going to be some expansion part sets for Build Divers Rise. Ooh. It's it is called the Enemy Gundam's New Weapons, and it is this weapon set is highly based off of the fin funnels and beam rifle of the new Gundam. So that's a that's a thing. Um, huh. And then after that, I think yeah, this is the last of this month's upcoming releases for mass release. Um, is Enemy Gundam's new armor item? And it's modified armor pieces of the new Gundam. So it has a very... Oh, I love the V-fin design. The V-fin design looks a lot... It's like half standard new Gundam. And then uh, on the right half of it, it looks very edgy looking. Really Banshee inspired. Ooh, nice. So it's like half and half, like a two-faced type of thing going on. Where are you looking at this at? Uh, Gundam Info. I'm looking at it right now, but I don't see it. Um, go to the news page and Got then it. scroll down to Gunpla. 
uh, and then hit the page that scroll down a bit. It's the latest June 2020 Gunpla lineup. Got it. Okay, there we go. All righty. So yeah, and that's pretty much the last item on the page there. Um, let's see. I'm looking through our Facebook chat right now because I did post something last week about uh, four upcoming kits from my favorite ever series. <laughs> um, this year, uh, tentati tentatively, um, because the whole COVID thing, delays will happen, of course, so we're not sure. But um, let's talk about this one really quick. Um, I forgot what page I got this on, but there's four Gundam Wing related kits coming out this year. Um, first thing on the screenshot that I took was the Master Grade 1 to 100 Wing Zero Endless Waltz. Um, I did some digging on the internet, and what I found was this was not the Verka uh, Gundam fans were asking for, actually, because if you guys have noticed with the Verka line, uh, version Katoki. Majority of these kits are based in Universal Century. Yeah. They don't really yeah. delve much into the alternate timelines. And from what I understand, is that Bandai put out a poll to, for voting, and fans chose the G Cell from G Reco. And this is what came out of it. So it kind of felt, from my understanding of what I talked to some people online about, is that. Fans did not ask for this. Um, there's a pretty... They're split down the middle. Like, the ones that do want it, they want it. Regardless, they voted or not for it. And then the ones that did vote for the G-Self to be made into a version Katoki kit, it's like, no, we're not going to buy it type of thing. So, and with from what I'm seeing on the line art that they released everywhere, um, and I looked at my real grade wing zero endless waltz and the wing separation and everything it really does look like just an upscaled version of the um the real grade but there will be some modifications because from what i read up on this up new master grade of the wing zero is that there will finally be a storage gimmick for the twin buster rifle and that will be in the big outer wings Oh, nice. Yeah, but aside from that, I can't tell anything else from the line art or any released information. I'm really curious to see how they're going to, to hide the, the rifle. I yeah. am too. Like, are they going to, is the rifle going to collapse down into thinner parts? Or My assumption is it's going to be part swapping. You think? Yeah. Makes sense. Because they had to accommodate for a weight and stability on those uh, binder pieces that attach to the wings. Yeah. Because, like, if you take the full constructed buster rifle on, e like, each half and just stick them underneath, that's going to cause some weight issues. Yep. That's what I thought first. So, yeah, I'm not sure, but it's slated for October or November of this year for release, so we'll see once prototype images come out. Moving on to the next kit for Gundam Wing releases. I'm excited for this one because it's 1 to 144 scale and high grade. It is the Gundam Heavy Arms TV version. Um, this one looks really cool. Of course, it's the Heavy Arms, the, the Terminator of Gundam Wing, basically. <laughs> Accurate. He'll be back. <laughs> um... Pretty much has all the gimmicks you would expect of the heavy arms, opening chest plates to, to, to reveal the chest Gatling guns, opening shoulder hatches for the missile pods, attachable Gatling gun for the left arm, a deployable army knife on the, the right arm. <laughs> I lost my train of thought there. Um, as well as opening uh, missile pods on the legs. So pretty much everything what you would expect from the standard uh, Gundam Heavy Arms. I've always been impressed with Heavy Arms, how they just, just cram so much firepower into one frame. Yeah. Yeah. 
And it works, too. Yeah, but in the show, he's like the first one to ever run out of ammo. Yeah. <laughs> true. Very he would true. think it would be the Sandrock because he has that one single Uzi. Well, yeah, but the Sandrock has, is more close combat because he has two Chotels. Uh, true, true. You, I mean, if you go with the TV version, um, uh, Heavy Arms has that that uh, that combat knife on its right arm. But yes. in the EW version... It literally is just spray and pray and hope that he blows up everything before he runs out of ammo. <laughs> yep. All righty. Now that with the heavy arms done, we'll move on. Um, this one is primarily just an expansion set. This is going to be on P Bandai. It's for their P Bandai release of the Gundam Geminis. It's just expansion parts for the high mobility set and the space unit set. So if you have the Geminis, you can go ahead and pre-order the these specific parts. So because back in the day, uh Bandai had released uh a Geminis Gundam, but also they made two other full entire mobile suit kits just for that. So um and they were all sadly really bad. <laughs> so I'm glad that uh this specific Gundam as well as his uh, other forms are getting releases, but just as expansion parts. So you won't have to buy completely new Gundams for it. So, and lastly is this one I'm excited for because of uh, it's been a while since we got an Endless Waltz Master Grade of something. First we had the Endless Waltz um, years ago, and then about in 2010 or 12, we got the Gundam Epion in Master Grade. This one is from the, from what I understand, because I'm reading, I'm yeah, I'm finally reading it right now. Um, the Gundam Wing Glory of Losers manga, which is a bit of a retelling of the series, but they're adding endless waltz aspects to the artwork. Um, it is the Gundam Sandrock Endless Waltz version. So he kind of has a cloak, but instead of the cloth cloak that uh, Ketra and Sandrock get in the movie, it's kind of like an armored prototype of that cloth version. So uh, let's see. It's called the Gundam Sandrock Mokai. Let's see typing it in right now. There was yeah. actually a, a, a variant Sandrock in um, Crossrays. Because um, in Crossrays, you have access to the uh, the um, Glory of Losers suit. Oh, so, really? Yeah, you have access to all of them. So, um, you know, you have... Um, there's actually an Epion one, too. What? Yeah, so I've seen them all. Is it the one that's like where he just has two giant-ass shields? Uh, hang on, I could have, I'm, I'm scrolling down to find her right now. Uh, shoot, where did you go, Ketra? Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, it's a screenshot from Crossways. Yep, that's it. Yep, that's the one, yep. Two big shields that cover his, his arms and the chest. Yep, that's it, that's the exact one you get to, you get to, uh, you get to play with. High defense, but Lord Norris, he's just so slow, my god. Well, I can tell. I bet because like all that armor would slow him down. Yeah, I have to put like this little, uh, those little um, uh, uh, boosters on them. That um, those things they fly on the um, God, the shackles. I think they call them to actually move around the map. Because if not, he just kind of sits there and just takes up space. Oh, he's literally a sand rock. Pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, that's interesting that this version of sand rock is getting a master grade. Because of a, um, oh, I totally forgot about this. It was a P band I released. Uh, this I saw this right before we even started making the show. Um, but it was a Death Scythe, and it had um a similar wing pack to the Endless Waltz version of the standard wing Gundam. So I'm like, okay, where is that from? I don't know. And then I look at, oh, it's from Glory of Losers. What is that? I don't know. But now I'm reading it. <laughs> Yeah, that one's in the that one's in the game too. It's uh, nice. Yeah. 
So it's, I think this is basically Bandai's way of saying, hey, guys, in the West, it's 25 years. We know you love this, so here you go. <laughs> I feel so loved. So um, I'm sure I'm, I'm really positive that this version of the Sandrock is going to be Bandai released just like the Death Scythe was. So maybe, maybe not. We haven't gotten any news in, uh, for that yet, but we do know it's coming. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. So in terms of that, let's see. I'm, let me check Big, Big Bad Toy Store because I saw some stuff that is coming out. Oh, you're going to love this, Edwin. Hmm? Uh, it's by Mega House, again. It is a catapult base, but it is of the interior catapult of the white base. Okay, that's awesome. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm pre-ordering. <laughs> uh, that's awesome. I that's oh yeah, I, that that I love it. Just the thought of it, I, I freaking love it. Just put your RX 78 and gun cannons there, and you're you're golden. <laughs> I need that in my life. Oh, speaking of the white base, um, before we get into this, I just want to save this now. I rewatched Origin, and my favorite, my favorite mobile suit, aside from Char's Zaku, of course, it's the prototype gun cannon. <laughs> I love that. I never thought I would like, uh, no, not a gun cannon, a gun tank. The gun tank is like my fa- one of my favorite things now at the moment because like just how crazy fast they make it in Origin, but in the original series, the gun tank is super slow. <laughs> well, they've had some time. They fixed it. Yeah, true. Oh man. Hear that, Gil? Zaku. Oh. Yeah. Wait, did I? Oh, I can't remember if I sent it just to if I sent it to the group or did I send it just to Marvin? I, I actually. Um, oh, it, I think he just sent it to me, but I okay. I know what you're talking about. Okay, then yeah. So so I saw I found a Zaku that I liked. It's the Psycho Zaku, Edwin. He likes yeah. the Psycho Zaku. Congratulations, Gil. You've redeemed yourself in my eyes. You picked a I good mean, one too. I know nothing of the <laughs> that because I saw um, I follow a uh, Gunstagram or something on on Instagram, and the the way that he painted it, I was so just intrigued by just the shading on the model, and he, I thought that the model looked really cool. So <laughs> it it even you know got me and to to possibly buy one in the near future, so you might see one from me. Cool, cool. See, see the love of Zaku. It, it, it's everywhere. It, it can bring people together. Once you and love a Zaku, everyone will love you. <laughs> exactly. It, it, when people turn from their heathen ways and come to their senses, yes. We'll we'll talk a little bit more about the Zaku once once we start talking about um, the the topic. Uh, this, oh yeah, the our origin, main topic. Um, yeah. You know which which uh I'll I'll explain more stuff about the Zaku. So. But sorry, that was just a little side note there. <laughs> All right. Um, so that's pretty much it from what I gather from upcoming releases. Um, a lot of things right now on BigBadToyStore.com are just a uh, majority of restocks coming out. But aside from those uh, catapult bases that we talked about this week and the last time, as well as the Gundam Universe figures. That's on this end of the spectrum of merchandise. But on P Bandai, going back to it, it there's a lot going on in terms of not just Gundam kit, model kits for Gunpla, but there's also just regular everyday items you can have. Uh, interestingly, I was like, what? <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, they're no longer available for pre-order. Let's see. Hold on. I think I could find them still. Going to Gundam right now. Ooh, yes. There's a plentiful amount of P Banda exclusive shirts. Um, ooh. Edwin. Yes. They have a lot of Universal Century Gundam shirts, but geez, they're expensive. 
Well, they typically are. I mean, oh, there's one for 40 bucks, 35. Well, here's the thing. Um, It's always nice to find uh, shirts, but see, my problem, and there it is, they don't have my size. Oh, no. I never have my size. That's why I don't have many Gundam shirts, because I'm they, they don't make them for people like myself. And most are cotton, so they shrink. So even if I were to get an XL, the damn thing's going to shrink to a large, and it's useless to me. Hang dry, buddy. Hang dry. <laughs> Yeah, that that only works for so long. Oh, true. So yes, I mean, don't get me wrong. I I I love I love Gundam shirts, and I would buy them. I'd buy lots of them. I just can't fit them. There's so many Zaku shirts. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. Ooh, there's a good. There's a Guff shirt. Oh my god. There's a Zeong shirt. <laughs> Yeah. That's a kit that I really want to get. Like a new high grade or a real grade of the Zeon. That deserves a real grade. I'm actually going to send you a picture of the shirt that I actually got. I'm still waiting on my. Uh... No, wait, no, the pre orders didn't close out yet, I think. So that's going to take a while for still for my Gundam Wing commemorative shirt to come to me. <laughs> uh... I can't wait to wear that. That'll be my third Gundam Wing shirt now. <laughs> Must be nice to be tiny. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> uh-huh. I just okay. wish I was closer to six feet. <laughs> it, it has its advantages, but it's hell trying to find clothes, especially nerd stuff. Oh, true. Yeah. It's, it depresses the hell out of me. It's like, oh, this is a great shirt. I love it. Oh, it's large. Can't fit it. Well, that sucks. I, just I was, I I was just super winged. surprised that I found a Gundam Wing shirt on HotTopic.com. I was like, what? <laughs> About time. They, they've had them. They have them every so often. True. I've gone in and I've seen random stuff. And I'm like, okay, oh, this is on. great. Can oh, can't. Can send can't. it just now? Yeah, I sent you the shirt that I picked up off a of Shirt Punch a few months ago. Oh, speaking of that website, I, I got a... Uh, uh, hold on, let's see. Ooh, that is a nice design. Oh, it's a dev shirt just like that. It's Evangelion, too. It's it's beautiful. There's an Evangelion shirt that this, too? And I have that one, too. Split fountain print. What's that mean? Huh? What does it mean by split fountain print? Is that just the maker? Oh, hey, man, I just work here. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um. Anyways, the shirt that I was talking about on from me getting a... It, blah, I can't talk. I'm so excited for this shirt because it's just hilarious. Um, it's Gundam Wing, of course. Uh, I got it as a tank top option. Um, it's Wing Zero Endless Waltz, but it's Hito building a Gumpla of it. I've seen that before. <laughs> and I, I love the, the title of the artwork. It says, it's just simply, I'll build you. <laughs> Yeah, that's about right. Oh, man. Yeah, I've seen that shirt before. And once again, I'm like, hey, I, that's great. I'm going to buy it. Nope, no, I'm not. Nope. I, <laughs> no, nope. Ed, Edwin can't buy that because he can't freaking fit it. No, he's screwed. Okay. Oh, yeah. Man. I had no idea. Oh, Jesus. Gundam Jesus. Oh, no. Yes, so there you go again, blaspheming in Gundam Jesus' name. Speaking of Gundam Jesus, I, sat, I, I had a few minutes, so I sat I sat down and reworked a few things about the Gundam Jesus thing. We can talk okay. about that. We can talk about that one later. Um, I'm just looking through the like the soft goods like collection that they have right now in P Bandai, and they have a Shar collection. But oh my God, this hoodie is eighty dollars. Ugh. And it's not even a zip up hoodie, it's just a pullover hoodie. Eighty dollars for a hoodie. Uh, most of the stuff is imported. That's probably why it's so expensive. True. And it's all exclusive. <laughs> yep. It it yeah yeah. I uh, mean it's good stuff though. Their Zapt collection is so little, it makes me sad. <laughs> a Zapt Face towel would seem nice though to have in my house. <laughs> I rarely ever see any Zaf stuff. 
more zap stuff for life. <laughs> oh, Actually, man. when I go to cons, I rarely ever see any. I see a lot of other uh, soldiers, but I never see any um any zap soldiers. I think I only seen like two in my yeah. anime convention going life. Oh, I just found your robot builder shirt. <laughs> I was I was I was looking at shirt punch and here it is. It's blue and he's sitting there building it. Yep. I I thought that was like the cutest and funniest thing I ever saw. That's what basically what hero would be just in like a series outside of Wing, like Domon was in Tri Fighters. <laughs> he'll just True. he'll just sit there building a gun plan and then like put a cherry bomb and on it and just blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the Death Scythe with the similar wing pack to Wing Gundam. Uh-huh. But it's out, of, it's out of stock. Figured. Crap. Dang it. Oh, the good stuff always is. The good stuff always is. I was so... Cl- I knew about this one, though. The real grade Tall Geese Mark One, But it was the TV color version. I'm like... Yeah. As much as I like the Tall Geese One... Having more color on it besides white and black, so I'll just stick with the standard one because it comes with white, black, and yellow. Nice. But yeah, for the for the fans of Gundam Wing that just want a version of Tall Geese One with just the red and black, I mean the the white and black color scheme. Uh, good luck, good luck to you all because this thing has been out of stock for some time. So, moving on uh, to one of our topics is spin-off series, um, meaning uh, anything SD or chibi-looking. Um, I know I sent you guys something like this about a week ago, and it was, like, Gundam Seed-focused. Like, I, I'm, o- I'm okay with it. I just wish there were more newer things like that. Because I don't think for Double O or even Unicorn, they didn't have any of that not non-canon comedic stuff going on. What do you mean? Uh, hang on. I sent it... Gilbert, did I send it to only you? No, I think... I, I remember it, uh, seeing it in the in the group chat. I may have glanced at it. Hang on a sec. What do you think of those, Gilbert, by the way? <laughs> uh, I thought they were pretty funny. <laughs> oh, man. Like, oh, uh, fun fact. I don't know if I ever told you, Gil, but the Japanese voice of Izak is also the same voice as the Japanese, is the same Japanese voice actor for Domon in G Gundam. Oh, really? really? Yeah. Uh-huh. Huh. That's why they sound so similar. <laughs> I was like, no way. Oh my god, it's Domon. It's my boy. <laughs> All right, I just resent it in the chat. So, yeah, just looking from the screen, like the thumbnail itself, it's like, yeah, it's bound to be pretty funny. <laughs> like, I know um, reading uh, when the Gundam Wing manga first hit bookshelves um, in the 2000s, like, I did buy one of them, and in the back, um, there was, like, these four-panel chibi comics, and, it, dude, it, it was so funny. I was, like, I was laughing my butt off the entire time after reading the main story. <laughs> like, and the funny thing is, uh, I think that was when the G Gundam manga was out as well, so they were, like, selling back-to-back. And what I noticed was these chibi... SD side comics were like collabing and crossovering with each other. So it's like um, there was one I remember. It was Hito. He's standing in like the middle of nowhere and it's he's like freezing. He's like, it's so cold. Why did I only wear a tank top and shorts? And then here comes <laughs> Domon wearing his full on outfit with his cape. It's like, ah, you're so weak. I'm not cold. <laughs> and then, it, but in reality, he's just hiding those like little heat packs that you like shake up and just put in your pockets or something (laughs) hey man those things save lives they do oh man 
But yeah, like I I really wish there was more of that for a lot more of the series. Like in like in an animated form. Well, I mean, Bleach had a few little shorts after every episode. Uh, when yeah, stuff out. like that. Stuff like that. Kind of really takes wish- attention away. Well, Gundam's always so so um serious. Serious, yeah. It's a it's a war drama, so to try to find some levity in that is is not is is not easy, if not impossible. Because I'm thinking about just thinking back on Seed and Destiny. Oh, there there was not any. No, it it was just serious. It was, yeah. Yeah. And uh, seeing like little animated shorts of them all SD fied and just wacky, crazy antics is like, okay, this is good. <laughs> it kind of like takes the tension off some viewers' shoulders after watching it. So. Yeah, it it I I I feel you um on that, but it's just there's just not much of it. I'm trying to think. I mean, you have some levity. I mean, if you look at Gundam Wing, you have Duo. Um, yeah. If you look at um, Double O, you have Lock On. Um, yep. He's just the most chill and laid back one. Um, God, there just are not many. It's all so serious. But then again, it's what Gundam is. It's it's serious. Oh, uh, now that you brought up some characters that are on the lighthearted side. Uh-huh. Um, Edwin, uh-huh. looking back, I think Kai was pretty lighthearted in the original series. Kai was an asshole. Yeah, but it was like I don't like after rewatching. Uh, we'll discuss more about let's let's skip this part for now because since uh, Gil just got through finishing uh, the origin and I just got through my rewatching of it. Uh, we'll save that for later. Uh-huh. Okay, so this one is a bit of a... After watching Ready Player One and how amazingly that they animated the RX-78... That was beautiful. Do you think that this could be a possibility of the way that they animated it and as well as another film, Pacific Rim, the first one, did so well with mech fights? Uh-huh. Do you think that there could be a potential movie? Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first... um, I remember when Pacific Rim first came out, um, and I went and I saw it, and my first thought was, okay, this... One, they have to nail it. And two, this will prove if a Gundam movie is even remotely possible. And when they did the first one, I'm just like, oh my god, it's, it's possible. We've we've crossed that line where it's we're in the realm of it. Then Pacific Rim Two comes out, and regardless, oh regardless of, and I, the first uh, one was good for what it was. The second one was like, oh Jesus, I yeah. kind of had a, I kind of had a feeling that it wasn't going to be the greatest movie ever. It wasn't going to be all that great, but. I went the first time to, to be like, okay, what kind of movie is it? I'm like, okay, well, I got my answer. And I saw it a second time just to, you know, nerd out on the robots. And um, the second time I watched it was more telling. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I was like, oh, they put the Unigrun Gundam in there. That That's adorable. Um, they did? Yeah, there, oh, yeah, there was a Gundam reference in there. There was a scene oh, where, where uh, the pilot, it was when it, I think one of them got destroyed and they pan up and there's a, 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 gun, a, a Unicorn Gundam statue. Wow. Yeah, it's it was there, and I I was like, oh oh they did it, and the final battle was in Japan too. I'm just like, oh they, they understood. Um, and then Ready Player One, you saw how the Gundam moved and everything, and and everything. I'm like, you know what? It can work. And I know that um, I know that um, I think Bandai or Sunrise, one of them, and Warner Brothers are working to try to bring a live action one. Um, and I want to see that, but that scared the hell out of me because it said live action. The first thing I thought of was G freaking savior. And oh, my heart. Oh. And I was, I was like, and I was like, oh, live action. And I'm like, crap baskets. Okay. We're there. No. So, but then again, you know, I'm like, okay. I mean, that was what? 2000. So we're looking at, at this point, 20 years ago. Well, my God, I'm old. Yeah. So we're looking at 20 years ago. G Savior was a made for TV movie. Uh, G Savior was garbage in the extreme. Yeah. It was insulting. 
It was mm-hmm. you said, and, and for me it was because in 2000 was when I was just starting to buy Gundam, Gundam DVDs, you know. So Dave. I was I was I was I was picking up Gundam Wing. Um, that was when I I started picking up um, Oasis uh Oasis Team Double O Eighty Three, and then I think I think G Savior I picked up in 2002 2003 one of them I can't remember. It was it was I was in high school. It was somewhere in there. And I remember I had got a bunch of Gundam stuff, and I saved it for last. I'm like, oh, this is just going to be the the creme de la creme, because it's like, oh, this is going to be great. And I spent the entire day watching Gundam, pop that in. I'm just like, well, I my soul has been shattered, because this, <laughs> this is absolute garbage. And, and I, I watched it once. I still have it because, Why? It, is a, because it is a Gundam movie, and it, <laughs> regardless, not, regardless of how... Movie. Well, regardless of how crap it is, it still completes the collection. So I'm like, okay, you're a Gundam movie, you dishonor its name, but I have to keep you. For ex- I mean, that's why I also own. Oh God, I almost threw up in my mouth when I'm about to say this one. Uh, Dragon Ball Evolution, and oh, uh, my brain. Yeah, and I um, I still have it because it's. It's Dragon Ball. I mean, it it doesn't go anywhere near. It doesn't even see the light of day. But I have it in a drawer in the darkness. But it's the there. The only thing good of that movie was the the outfit for Goku. I do like the outfit. It's a it's like if you were to make if you were to meet Goku in real life in a practical sense, that's what something he would wear. <laughs> Fun, fun. It was okay. Yeah, yeah. Now I think about it, it was it was okay. Um, but the fun fact, was okay. But fun fact, I actually walked out the first time I saw it. I would have. I, I walked out of the theater. I was about halfway through it, and the part there where I was just like, I can't take this shit no more, was when uh, then we they introduced Master Roshi. I was like, I can't do it, and I left. Dang. And me and all three, me three, of my friends, where we went, we were just like, all right, this is gonna be the greatest thing ever. Master Roshi came. I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, let's bounce. We're we're good. We're done. And we we walked out, and we we almost went to the the, the desk and almost got a refund. We're like, no, nope, we're just gonna go drown our sorrows at Red Robins and strawberry <laughs> and, and strawberry lemonade because this is some garbage. Um, but now I'm talking about crap. Right now I'm I'm digressing from what we were talking about before. Uh, we were talking about movies, and then we got into G Savers. Since you brought that up. Yeah. My exposure to this train wreck of a Gundam property. Um Hollywood video was still around. Uh it was a Friday after school. We had a short day. So me and I think two of my friends who were into Gundam were like, Yeah, let's go. Uh let's go to Hollywood video and then like we'll rent the the movie. I'm like I was like, There's a movie? Yeah, dude, there's a movie. I was like, All right, let's go get it. So we, we picked up a few uh, DVDs of Gundam. It was a G Gundam DVD, uh, Gundam Wing Endless Waltz, and G Savior. And then it was like, oh, it's a live movie, so we'll save this for last. And then I was like, oh, I wonder if Amro's in it and Shari's going to be in it. And then, and then uh, there was barely anything of Mobile Suits in that movie. Uh huh. And how the did, plot makes zero to little sense. <laughs> how did that make you feel about yourself? I feel like <laughs> I wasted my time, <laughs> and my mm-hmm. friend felt like he wasted his allowance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that movie is is a blotch in 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 human existence. That's how bad that movie is, and it should have. Oh, it depresses me just thinking about it. It makes and me kind of sad. Did you see the G Savers cameo in Build Fighters, Edwin? No, I don't remember that, and I'm not gonna search for it. Because he gets what he deserves. <laughs> okay, I might, I'm, I might look it up now if it gets blown he up. Guys, <laughs> I did not see that. I probably was just, I mean, you mean the first Build Fighters? Was it in that one? I think it was Build Fighters or Try. Oh, either I one of those two. There were so many random scenes where it was a bunch of suits in battle, and then did just whole hordes of them just getting blown up. You're like, oh, there's that one, there's that one, and then two seconds later, the main character comes in, and blows up like nine of them. You're like, oh, where there they went. It's like, oh, okay. But no, I didn't, I didn't see the G Saviors uh, cameo, and I don't think I want to. I think I'm just gonna live in ignorance on that one. He just dies in a big, like 
And an explosion bigger than any of the other ones' explosions. Well, at least they sent him off great. You know, Bandai <laughs> and Sunrise should be ashamed of themselves. That was insulting. Uh, you know, we're talking about. You know, you know, we're talking about. You know, like you know, Gundam Jesus and all that. That movie is the Antichrist. <laughs> that movie is the freaking Gundam Antichrist. That's what that movie is. All right. Oh my really? god. I mean, am I wrong? I mean, seriously, seriously, am I wrong? wrong. <laughs> exactly. It, it, the movie, it's like Ragnarok, the Antichrist, and the, 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 it, oh, it's terrible. It's the end of days. I mean, you know, you know, weaker comp. If a week, if, 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 okay, if Sunrise and Bandai were weaker companies, and they said, oh, this, this is the, the, the end all to be all. This is gonna be the greatest movie ever. That would have destroyed their companies, and they would have gone under because the movie was that bad. It, it's yeah. it's literally the, the 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 freaking apocalypse. That is what that movie is. It's the apocalypse. And good luck, people trying to actually look for the movie because there's barely anything of it. Yeah, because you know it was purged, kind of like you know when Atari made all those ET games, and now they're buried in some random landfill somewhere. <laughs> yeah. True story, by the way. And. Speaking of potential movie, Edwin, and since you brought it up about Warner Brothers reaching out to Bandai and Sunrise about doing a movie, which timeline would do you think that they would go? Because uh, I'm assuming because just of popularity in Western countries, they'd go with Wing. I don't think that would be a good start. No, I it, I, no, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. I mean, it would. Wing would be on the list. It has to be UC because yeah. if you, if you if Warner Brothers makes a Gundam movie, they cannot say, okay, we're gonna make this for purely American audiences because you're gonna piss off. Yeah. Uh, I don't know the 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 land the entire world came from, and then you're gonna piss off Japan because that's where Gundam came from. It's like no, you have to go with UC because when you make a Gundam movie, and that's what people don't understand, is that certain franchises. Certain franchises can be adapted for other people. Others, mm-hmm. you can do it, but it takes a lot of work. Yes. Um, I'll give you an example. Marvel did an excellent job at doing yes. it. You know? I mean, there there was stuff in there for people who knew, like my one of my roommates. Um, he's really into Marvel, so he sees things that I don't. Um, even though I think the Marvel movies are fantastic, he sees him. Oh, that was in there. Oh, that was in that comic book. There's he knows the lore. Mm-hmm. Uh, Star Trek. Star Trek is my thing. So when I went to go see, you know, the the J.J. Abrams movies, oh dear lord, um, there were things in there that all that Star Trek fans caught that I caught, and I'm like, okay, that's fine. But you try to make that for everyone, which is I'm not saying don't do it, but you have to do it right, and I and. Star Trek, it didn't have that Star Trek feel to it, you know? It was more like, hey, it was a good science fiction movie. Okay. But yeah, it, I get it. it was a good science fiction action movie, but it is not, it does not feel like a Star Trek movie. And I get why they did what they did, because, you know, they wanted to get it out there to everyone. I understand that. And I'm not saying don't do it, but you have to do it right. Um, you go to DC... Oh, um, DC, I don't know what the hell they were thinking. I mean, I, I, I thought Aquaman was pretty solid, personally. Damn right. Um, I thought it was a pretty solid movie. Wonder Woman uh, was a solid movie. Wonder Woman was fantastic. You know, that was like the only movie I was really excited about. I like how this is a Gundam podcast. We're talking about all this. Um, and then you had, then you have Shazam. A, yeah, Shazam was good. And then Batman vs Superman was uh, uh, it was uh, oh God Almighty, but it did what it was supposed to do. Then there was Justice League. Moving on, so Moving you have, on. You have that on. <laughs> because the amount of profanity I might start using would probably get us cut off by the FCC. So I'm just gonna stop right there. <laughs> yes, and I probably wouldn't be able to upload this on YouTube, but uh, <laughs> well, um, it's gonna be like, oh, he just dropped eight f bombs in three seconds. That's amazing. <laughs> Edwin, yeah. abort, abort. <laughs> and it's like, oh, wait, uh, rumor has it he's still going. He hasn't stopped. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah, so um, when it comes Gundam. to it, Gundam, yeah. So when it comes to it, you have to go with UC, and you have to be true to the original lore because it's a Gundam movie. You're making it for Gundam fans. Now, let's say, let's say Marvin, you're not a Gundam fan, right? Let's say this, right. is, this is Earth 2, and you're not a Gundam fan. 
I'm a Zoid know. fan. <laughs> Hey, 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 hey. Zoids is still good, all right? I know, but it's like I never got into it. So I was like, okay. <laughs> I, I like Zoids. Zoids. Zoids is pretty solid. Um, But let's say you never have me like, oh, what's Gundam? You see the trailer. Oh, it's a giant robot flying around blowing stuff up. That looks fascinating. Oh, my friend knows about Gundam. Hey, you should go watch it. It's great. Sure, I'll give it a shot. You go watch it. Hey, not too shabby. Okay. I wish to, I, you know, it's kind of like uh, Star Troopers. Uh, do you wish to know more? Would you like to know more? It's like, yes, yes, I do want to know more. And then that's when you begin your journey into the fandom. And you're like, okay, this movie is based in UC. This movie covers the one-year war. Hey, the original Gundam covers the one-year war. Let me watch this. Oh, that's what happened. That's who they are. But wait, there's more. There's the Mess Team. There's 0083. There are there's sequel upon sequel upon sequel. And you're mm-hmm. like, oh, this is fascinating, and it all starts from that movie. But you have to keep it, you know, true to the the, um, the source material. Exactly. Now, sometimes you can't do it because you yeah. know, manga, uh, anime, and and the big screen, you have to make adjustments. It's like you know, the manga is not ex- the anime is not exactly like the manga. Right. It, it happens. I mean, <laughs> just like differences with Dragon Ball Z, it's manga. Exactly, and then but then you got Brotherhood, which fixed <laughs> which fixed that one. I uh, like the original though. <laughs> it was still good. It was just that they just said, yeah, this one was good, but this one's better. So, but you you have that, you know, and and then you have some animes that stop, and you have the manga that keeps going, i.e. Bleach. Great series stopped. The manga's gone, and it's 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 it's, it's gone insane right now. Um, so you have that. So you have to be very careful how you do it. Um, and you have to you know um give the material its respect and you have to give it its due because if you don't you're going to you're going you're going to f it up and then you're going to piss everybody off and then you're going to have a justice league situation where you spend all this money on this movie this is you know uh DC's counter to Avengers and you literally just titanic that crap and it just hits the iceberg and sinks yeah. you have to be very, very, very careful how you do it. So that's 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 my take on the whole thing. All righty, uh, Gilbert. So, what do you think about the possibility of a of a Gundam movie, a live action movie, happening? Well, the technology is here now. I mean, we we got Transformers that that you know they move smoothly like on screen. Um, you know, like the Bumblebee movie. Um, uh, you know, we have, we saw the, just like you guys said, the uh, Ready Player One, the animation was there too, and it looks like super smooth, you know? So the technology is there. Um, where to start, you know, like, like we have to see what the actual popularity is, you know, obviously because we, we enjoy the content, like, you know, we think like that a lot of people like it, but if we actually asked around, like, you know, the general public, you know um are they ready for something like that you know true so and it might be just like a niche group and and we're not seeing past that that is true there's a there is the general audience and um like a lot of uh my example my relatives my cousins um that grew up the same time as me um they do remember gundam wing and that's pretty much it when they hear of gundam they don't know anything about the Universal Century or anything like that. Yeah. So, um, if let's say for just example, they do make a Gundam Wing movie, if they do center it around Wing, that has to be at least a one or two movie deal. They cannot go further than that. Yep. Because literally, as much as I love Gundam Wing, there's not much lore to go on it. Yeah. Compared to Universal Century, where there's like decades of worth of material <laughs> well there is another route they could go um and you could it's the route that disney went <clears throat> and instead of doing a live action movie do a live action tv show i mean perfectly Ooh. good ex- perfect, perfectly good example look at the mandalorian now could the mandalorian oh, have have been a movie oh yes it, it could have been a fantastic movie but it's a tv show and and i mean it's still fantastic it is one of the 
I, I can't even say phrases enough. It's, it's, it's that wonderful. But they, I think they could take the route of a TV show. And I think that for the Universal Century, okay, you have enough material, like you said, you can do a movie. For Wing, you can probably get away with doing a, um, a TV show. Or if you want to do it another way, do um, a really, really good TV movie, but then you do more than one of those. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that way you can give it its due because, yo, it's such a small universe, only 50 episodes. Well, if you made a TV show, you could say one episode might be about an hour, but let's say that covers episodes one through five, you know? Yeah. Or something, or something like that. And you could do something like that to where you wouldn't have to spend the money and make, you know, a 50. Actually, no, they don't even do that anymore. Um, uh, Like a 20, 25, 30 episode seasons, uh, which are. Un, which are actually uncommon now because um, most things on Netflix and other streaming services, you're looking at about, you know, 15, maybe 20 episodes, sometimes only 10. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but the production quality is really high. Like for example, Star Trek Picard, fantastic show. It's very, the sh- series is very short, but the production quality is fantastic. Uh, but it's a really short series. He's only like, I think eight or nine, maybe 10 episodes, I think. But I think that's a good idea, just to make it a TV movie and then do it like that. And if you did that, and then you flooded the industry with those type of things, you have the TV show that comes out, you already have the anime covered, and that's already you know on DVDs, on um, Blu-rays, that's all over the world. Then you come out with a movie, you have like, and then you have you have manga too. So you have all all four of them. You could flood the whole planet with this stuff, and you could make a killing off of it. Now, granted. Right. You're looking at at this rate. You're probably looking at billions of dollars here to even execute this. But if you if they did it like that, I think they'd be able to just keep Gundam relevant and not let it get stagnant. Kind of like what happened with Star Trek. Like after 2005, when Enterprise went off the air, Star Trek vanished um, until 2009. Yeah, you know, that's until J.J. Abrams got a hold of it, and that's that's four years where a fandom just kind of disappears and that can kill it that can kill anything i mean star trek still had the novels which were really good but when you have a tv show that starts in the 70s and then you have next generation that came in in the late 80s you pretty much had a star trek show from the late 80s to the mid 2000s and then it vanished you know you can't do that so i I think that's what they should do honestly what um like would you think that it it would work like on a which uh, streaming platform possibly oh. do you think would would probably pick it up? Oh dear lord! Um. Uh, <laughs> as much as I want to say Netflix, knowing how fast they cancel things, no, I don't want it on Netflix. <laughs> and Disney, no, because if Disney agrees <laughs> to it, they're going to end up owning the thing before too long. So but hey, no. we might get a Gundam land at Disney. <laughs> Could you imagine? Yeah, that? yeah. no, I can't because I don't know. <laughs> no, Disney. I mean, I know within. I, I give it within the next hundred years, Disney will probably. Oh, there we own the planet, but they're pretty much gonna own everything. So, I mean, I, I mean, they already. Well, they got Lucasfilms, they got Marvel, they got Fox, they got I ESPN, mean, and ESPN, and ABC. So yeah. next, I mean, if you really look at what's next, I mean, you know, they could go after Telemundo. I don't know why they would <laughs> I, go after I've Telemundo. I've, I've, had, I've heard rumors that um, that they were looking into buying Sony's uh, movie, um, like movie line and stuff, movie Do production. It. So, Do it. you know, if they did, you know, they would or, own wait, Spidey for wait, sure. Was it, no, it wasn't. So it wasn't Disney. It was Apple. Apple. Was oh, yeah, that's right. Apple buy, wanted yeah, Apple wanted it, so that would that would be great for Disney at that point because Apple and Disney have a decent uh, business relationship. Yeah, they do. So it would. So they were. So yeah, I remember I was reading that. Yeah, Apple. They were. They weren't trying to get Sony. They were just trying to get the rights, weren't they, to the movies? Yeah, I think uh-huh. that they wanted the studio, man. I, oh. if, if they well, wanted it, to go all the way on that. It wouldn't be unprecedented for them to try to get the rights of certain things because most people don't know this, but. After Enterprise went off the air in 2005, Star Trek kind of split between Paramount and CBS. That's why Discovery, um, Picard, and the other um, – and um, with the J.J. movies, it was CBS that uh-huh. 
uh, was there. And CBS got the TV rights and I think the movie rights and Paramount kept the uh, DVD rights and stuff like that. That's why if you were to look into buying some uh, DVDs or whatever, it, it still has Paramount on it because Paramount kept those rights. Uh, but CBS got the video game rights and all that stuff. So it's not on, it's it would not be um out of the out of the uh, conversation for Apple to just say I want these rights and I want this and yeah. What I think with the because like they <clears throat> just a recent study came out saying that Apple is like ranked twelfth among like all the streaming networks right now and everything with their Apple Plus. So I think they're trying to um, possibly look into Sony to to get their backlog and then use their studio to try to build themselves up. So maybe that's why they would go all the way. But who knows? You know, like you said, it's it's possible that they could just do certain rights, you know, and, and go that way, too. Yeah, it's I mean, either way they could do it. I mean, with, with everything right now, it's switching from TV to to streaming now. So, I mean, it, that's where the money is now. Not not so much TV, but just streaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's 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 just the universe now man i mean i remember when hulu first came out it was you know basic and you had certain shows and lots of anime and now it's hulu tv and all this other wonderful stuff it's like good god almighty what has happened here now hulu, even amazon has their own studio now yeah, yeah. netflix boys. has its own studio oh man i can't wait till the boys come back yeah you know, i never saw that but it was on my list i know you know what considering that i'm all this time, I, I still have plenty of time. You know what? That's my plan for the night. Yep. Cook dinner. Watch the boys. I'm going to do that tonight. It's, yeah, yeah it's it's so, it's awesome. Like I heard it was you know, really then good. Every, then COVID shut down everything, and I was like, I was looking forward to it. I was like, oh, come on. But I guess they had to probably stop production or something. Cause, yeah. Yeah. A bunch of stuff had to, a bunch of stuff had to stop, which was depressing. Um, yeah. On the, um. Uh, I think uh, some of the the, the DC and Mar- uh, DC stuff on no not DC uh, Supernatural stopped, and this is their final season. So Supernatural stopped, which just destroyed me because uh, I love that show. <laughs> yeah, a lot of production on both sides of Marvel and DC had stopped as well. So yeah. Um, well, that was <laughs> what the big old backup with like Black Widow too. You know. Yep. So- Black Widow was backed up, postponed. Wonder Woman was backed up, postponed. So production of Loki was postponed. But yeah, uh, supposedly Wanda, the WandaVision w- is pretty much done and is still scheduled to to release in the fall, I think. Okay, okay, back on track, back on track. <laughs> All right, back on we, track. We side reeled for a long time. <laughs> Hey, I, I think we're okay. We, we you know, yeah, we're good. Gundam, Gundam went to nerd stuff, which is, you know, what we're talking about here. Yeah. And it just shows that, you know, even talk about Gundam, it can bleed into everything, which is why Gundam can bring everyone together. Like, what <laughs> if Tony Stark made a Gundam? It would probably be the most broken thing on the planet. It would be like a combination of the Heavy Arms and Wing Zero. And the Hulkbuster. <sighs> I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, yeah, the Hulkbuster would be more of the God Gundam. Well, I mean, if you look at how the how the how you know the the um his suits move, it, it I mean it moves like a mobile suit. You know, you have thrusters, you have verniers, you have um the whole AMBAC thing where you move one way, you turn your body a different way. If you really look at how it moves, it moves like a mobile suit. So yeah. Um, versus, you know, hey, it's a comic book, but how does this move? It's like, I, if I were, if I were to make, if I were to say, okay, back in 2008, okay, Iron Man movie, how would this suit move? I'd pretty much look at Gundam, um, and I'd be like, okay, how are these things moving? And it's the same basic principle, just the, uh, power and propulsion technology is different. Um, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, so I'm like, I mean, if you really look at, if you broke down the suit and compared to the RX-78, you got a lot of similarities there. Yeah. Like, especially with the, like, example, the Iron Man Mark I, um, it reminds you of the Zaku one. Like, very yeah. prototype. Yeah, yeah, it does. I never thought about that, but yeah, you're right, it does. Yeah. Yeah, and it's how, how it basically moves. So, I mean, like I said, Gundam can, can bring so many people together, and then you can be an idiot like me and try to put Gundam in Dungeons and & Dragons and break the whole day. <laughs> and, and, and if anyone who plays D&D listens 
to this podcast, I will say the same thing I've been saying since I did this 10 years ago. I regret nothing. I apologize <laughs> for nothing. Get wrecked. Oh, man. And if Wizards of the Coast is listening to this, call me. I have ideas. Moving on. Moving on. Um, so, Edwin, I posted this question in our chat a few days ago, and uh-huh. you said let's hold off on it. Uh-huh. Um, I think we could add this to to be one of our uh, episode-ly uh, subjects. Uh, a Gundam face-off, but not based on pilot, but based on specs. Right. Technical specs. So, right, right, right. Um, the first round um, will be going to the hero of the entire Gundam series, Amuro's new Gundam from Shars Counterattack, going up against <sighs> Gundam Jesus Kira Yamato Strike Freedom. Woo! I'm just reveling in the amount of pain that it took you to say that. <sighs> um, yeah. So, a couple of things about this. Um, I've decided to revise the list of the Trinity um, in Gundam. So, huh? uh, oh, no. Yeah, I, Trinity I, of Gundam? Oh, 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 there is now. So, um, uh, Kira is no longer Gundam Jesus. Thank yes. the Lord. <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, no, there is a Lord, and his name is Setsune Fsei. So, um, what? I, I really so? thought of... Well, Him? yeah. You have to first of all look at who Setsuna is and what he can do. Now okay. you now now look every okay, series, okay, true, true. every series that you have innovators and who are innovators, basically the new types, and then you have Kira who is the perfect coordinator. So you have the 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 apex of humanity, right? You know. Mm-hmm. Um. So you look at it. Now look at Setsuna. You know he transcends dimensional bounds. He's yes, God. He does. He's 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 God. Okay. Um, then you have Amuro, who is basically Jesus at this point, uh, because, you know, his abilities, like you look at a uh, Charles Connor attack and then the psycho Kamu system, you know, the cycle, uh, the, uh, cycle frame. frame. Yeah. The cycle frame went ape shit with, you know, him fighting Char and Char is the second coming of Jesus, by the way. Um, so you have that. And so you're like, okay, so you're transcending those dimensional bounds. And then you have Kira, who's like the Holy Spirit, because he's just, actually, no, no, think about it. Let's rework that. Amro is Holy Spirit. Kira actually is Jesus. Yeah, yeah, Kira is Jesus. Oh. Because, yeah, he is, uh, because he is, he is the power personified in a mortal frame, but he has yet to transcend that, that dimensional bounds into the, to the new world and the new realm. So, yes, Jesus actually is Kira Yamato. I, just, I have to go back to that now that I'm thinking about it. So, yes, that's the Holy Trinity. Sets an FSA is God. Amor Ray is Jesus. I mean, he's Holy Spirit. Kira Yamato, Jesus. That's, that's, that's how it is. I mean, if you disagree, feel free, but that's how I look at it. So, what does that make Domon? <laughs> An apostle? I don't know. John the Baptist? I don't know. Uh, uh, he can do. He could, the the guy can physically do things. You know what? Like, you know what? You know what? He's Goku. We're just gonna call him Goku. There you go. See, Goku. Gundam Goku. Okay, I'm fine Here, with that. Yeah, he's, Domon he's, is Gundam Goku. Yes, he's Gundam Goku. See, there you go. Um, but moving on. So in terms of technical specs between the RX-93 and the Strike Freedom, if you were to put these two together, put them on autopilot with no pilot, the Strike Freedom would wreck the RX-93. It's if you just look at their armaments and look at their their technical specifications, and for example, um, the RX-93, I don't even need to look at the specs and know what it has. It has what two beam sabers, a beam rifle, a bazooka, and funnels. And aside from the Vulcans, you have in the head, you have the Strike Freedom, which is a complete, which is a monster. You have uh, head Vulcans, you, the Sea Wiz in the heads, you have two beam rifles, you have a, a, a beam cannon built into the damn chest. Um, you have the our rifles can uh, combine into a sniper mode, and then you have the um, the Dragoon bits on the on the back, and even between that and the bits, the the, the fin funnels and the Dragoon uh, mm-hmm. things on the, uh, the Strike Freedom, Strike Freedom has more. Has you a double bladed beam saber. Yeah, it has it has two beam sabers. Um, then you have phase shift armor, 
So you have that, um, which doesn't really factor too much into this fight. I mean, it would negate the um, the new Gundam's uh, bazooka, but, you know, using beam weapons. Um, and in general, like maneuverability, if you look at how this thing moves, and then you have the its propulsion system, which is the Voyager Lumineer system, that gives it, 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 it makes it rigged. So aside from that, it's like, yeah, the technical te- technical wise, the Strike Freedom would annihilate the RX seven, uh, the R- the RX nine three uh, new Gundam. Sorry, I, Universal oh, Century oh, fans. Oh, wait a minute! And on top of that, I, I almost forgot about the damn rail guns on its waist. So yes, um, what's that and, thing that it attaches to the itself? That little, the meteor. That, yeah, the meteor that overpowered yeah. not yeah. dendrobium. <laughs> Exactly. So it's like if you technical wise, it's it's hands down. But once again, in Gundam, it comes down to the pilot mm-hmm. um, and you can you can get the best. And as, as it's shown, you know, you can have one suit that's superior, one suit that is inferior. But that doesn't mean an inferior suit's going to lose, i.e. Kiriyamato versus Shinasuke. So, I mean, you have all those factors to put in there, but. In that aspect, though, since you brought it up, like, Amro would kill someone, Kira won't. True. Their mindset's different, because Amro, they all start off as the same, but Amro goes from kid to soldier. Um, Kira goes from kid to soldier to pacifist. Yeah. And they're both nice people, and they're both people you'd want to invite over for, for tea, Okay, um, Amro has a severe case of PTSD. That's that's not even joking. He is... He yeah, is, he's pretty wrecked. I mean, if you look at where he was in Zeta Gundam, it's just like, oh, what happened after the, the war? Oh, the Federation locked me up because they said I was too dangerous. Oh, okay. And mm. and Kira's just living a normal life. Um, but in terms of fighting like that, I mean, if you were to put Kira and in, 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 um, Amro in their suits who would fight... Honestly, it's a toss-up, but like you said, Kira would try to disable the new Gundam, while um, the new Gundam would try to destroy the Strike Freedom. So, in that regard, I would say that with pilots, the new Gundam might win in terms of um, pilot, in terms of what their mentality is. But that's a toss-up um, because you have a. Suit. I think it would be a close match. Oh, it would. No, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm like, thinking if, if someone like, said it's like 49 percent versus 51 percent, that's how close this fight would be. Um, but like, I really think that, um, yeah. Now, if you were to put the double O in this mix, oh, the double O would just freaking wreck like everybody. <laughs> Seriously, it's like, oh yeah, I'm cure. I'm not gonna kill you. I'm armor gonna kill you. It's such one's like, yeah, I want to be a Gundam Trans Am, and you're you're done. <laughs> oh, and, and then let's just jump this one even farther. Put him in a Quanta game. Oh boy, game. That's yep. that's. It's like the the Dave Chappelle thing. Game blouses. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. As much as I don't like Setsuna, but I have to admit that guy is overpowered. <laughs> he really is. I mean, he, he, he his suit like teleported, and in, in last scene in Double O Trailblazer, he's like, "Okay, all right, all right, uh, Setsuna, we're uh, gonna go to the home planet of these people." Okay, and he opens a jump gate and Trent and just traveled across the galaxy. It's like, oh, well, well, crap. Okay, that's that's where we are. Um. Oh, and another technical thing is that um you have to deal with um g-forces and inertial dampening yes. um, gundams most mobile suits they're that's why you have to have a really strong pilot some have inertial dampening capabilities in terms of their suits and their seats you look at gn driven suits and the gn particles mm-hmm. negate um negate g-forces so they act as inertial dampeners which is why the suits can move as fast as they do and move like humans almost so you have that so if you have a suit that can move that fast and the pilot won't die tall then, geese <laughs> yeah basically that's pretty much <laughs> what happened Otto killed himself because he couldn't handle the suit um yep. you look at um um graham Aker when he had the flag he's like oh here are the gundams fix up my flag and then he was like yeah but if i do this you're gonna be pulling like eight g's can your body handle he's like oh yeah i'll figure it out and, and then he starts coughing up blood exactly 
you know, and, and then when he fought uh, one of the, the Gundam thrones, he chopped its arm off and made it retreat, but his body was wrecked. Yes. So, and he was like, yeah, I and that just showed you even in Gundam, even in double O, it's like, yeah, they just cannot move that fast. It's just how it is. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Like, is the pilot physically strong enough to handle the amount of force you're feeling when you're piloting a suit? Exactly, which is why I think that 0083 is a very interesting series because you didn't have any new types, you didn't have any innovators, you know. It was just straight up soldiers on soldiers. Right, you had regular, you had you 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 had ace pilots, not mm-hmm. over augmented. No, you're just really good at what you do. You have skill, you know. You're not augmented by the universe or power. You're just just like an ace pilot in uh, the the air force. You're just really good at what you do. You know, you're like you have a sniper in the military. You're just really good at what you do. And when they're fighting, you know, they're moving fast and they're it, it you know, it's like it's just man on man. It's not it's not augmented in any way. And I think those battles are more real. You look at um uh OHMS team, um, you know, you're you're fighting in the jungle, you know, it's very reminiscent of like, you know, Nam, for example. Right. So you're you're fighting in the jungle, you know, this is guerrilla combat, you know. Um and when and you're you have the gravity aspect, so you're not moving as fast as you want to, but because you're in gravity, but it, it's a very good representation of you know urban combat when it comes to mobile suits, which I really think that uh, OHMS team was not only going for, but they nailed. You know. Right. So that is my take on this, and I guess my inadvertent analysis of mobile suit combat. Okay. Uh, Edwin, your thoughts? Um, well, I just gave you my thoughts. Thank you for that. No, sorry, sorry. Gilbert, your thoughts. I mean, I can start over if you'd like. No, no, you're fine. <laughs> I and, mean, you know, I, I don't remember what I said, but I can probably pick up <laughs> half of it. <laughs> so, Gilbert, your thoughts. New versus Strike Freedom. Oh, and, um, to go, sorry, to go back on your, um, on the whole thing that you were saying, Edwin, about the dragoons and the and the fin funnels. Uh-huh. From what I understand, uh, in UC, the funnels can only work in space. That while as the dragoons, from what I can understand from only the Strike Freedom, is that the Strike Freedom's dragoon system can work in atmosphere and space. I'm not sure about that one. I've never seen it used in the atmosphere, honestly. Because I, I know that when he, I know that the, he, when he ever, when he's ever done the multi-lock, um, he's never used them. Um, I honestly think that just for you know how they are, I think zero G is the only way to work because you'd have to have a really powerful propulsion system to move something that small that fast and have it float. True. Yeah. So, I, I can't think I, of any any series where I've seen. Yeah, even in Double O. Um, oh, yeah, no, 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 Double O. Yeah, they did. They had the fangs. The fangs worked in the atmosphere. Yeah. Oh. Fangs okay. Fly. Yeah, but those were, but that was, you know, using GN particles and uh, those things do things to people and things. And things. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, what I think is that, like, with if the pilot, if the main pilots of those two suits are going at it. Um, and with the mentality that they're in, like, Kira is like, I won't kill anybody anymore. Amro is like, I'm a soldier through and through. I will do what needs to be done. Yeah. Um, I think Amro would win because with that pacifist aspect, Kira is holding back. Amro would go all out. And um, yeah, sure. even though the new Gundam is technologically uh, inferior compared to the Strike Freedom, like... The new Gundam would be inoperable by the time the fight's done. Probably. Like, if Amra would win, that's the condition that the new Gundam would be in. It cannot even be used anymore. It probably think, looked yeah. like the impulse after it fought the de- after it fought the uh, the strike. Uh, the, yeah, uh, freedom. exactly. Yeah. So, like, yeah, put a lot of good points in terms of, I mean, like in the technical aspect, but I think that it's mainly the pilots. Um, like, Amro would take the win, but he would lose his suit. Because yeah. he's not a pacifist. Yeah. But, 
if <clears throat> Kira, Kira turned around, nutted up, and said, I'm going to murder you, then yeah. that would, <laughs> yeah, that, but that would go, going, to, go to Shin. But, I'm going to go to Kira. Yeah. But knowing how Seed and Seed Destiny turned out, no, Kira would not. <laughs> He'll get serious, but he won't kill. Maybe you could oh. just, I mean, just disable, you know, completely disable it. But, I mean, to you, you have to get past the soldier, basically, like the somebody trying to just attack you and kill you the whole time, you know? Mm-hmm. So. Honestly, I think a better fight would be the Destiny versus the RX uh, versus the New Gundam. Ooh. Because you have a suit, the desk, the suit in the Destiny that is still not as many weapons. It's more on an even playing field. Um, actually, overall, when it comes to weapons, the new Gundam would have a few more, I think, especially with the funnels. But you'd have two pilots who were soldiers, so you'd have a more of an even fight. True, true. And and Shin has shown that he can engage an opponent who uses. Uh, Fins, funnels, and, and, and the dragoon system. So even mm-hmm. though Amuro does use it, he can still deal with it. And mm-hmm. both suits are pretty much mid to close range, anyways, with their loadout. Um, except that the the Destiny has his uh, that impulse cannon, but and and their new gun just has a beam rifle. But I think that that would be a, a much better fight to watch. True. Oh, I forgot something that the new Gundam could do. It could do that pyramid shield surrounding it too to negate beam attacks true but the question is how much how much can it take yeah because like i think the big mega particle cannon that the destiny has i think that shield can hold up against it because the only time we see amuro use that shield effect was against the the alpha zero and yeah. that thing shot a big spirit bomb looking blast at it so that just tore right through the shield <laughs> Yeah, it works. Just um, it would be a, yeah, it would be a very. I think that'd be a more of a, a, a fight I'd like to see, honestly. Hmm. I that'd think be, we could yeah. save that. Let's keep Amuro in the ring and then just switch out opponent, opponents for the next time. Works for me. Well, Gil, what do you think? No, I think well with the between the the Destiny and the the new. Yeah. I think I think it, you, like you guys said, it would be very even. Um, you know, uh, maybe th- maybe the destiny would would like inch the win. You know, it'd be it's it, it'd be tough. I I, th- I think you can go either way. Um, I can see both. I can see both suits potentially winning that fight. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that fight would come down. That fight would come all the way down to technique and who makes the first slight mistake. I think it's Shin <laughs> who makes the mistake. He's younger, so yeah. Yeah. And also, it's mostly in his in his uh, his rage too, because remember he almost killed Luna in the final battle. <laughs> uh, that is true, and he got and Atherin owned his ass. Like, dude, what the heck? <laughs> I was killing your girl. Shin has problems. Like, if I was Luna after that battle, like, what the hell? We're done. <laughs> it was like, MF, you tried to kill me. Well, no, it was a huge battle. No, 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 no. You tried to kill me. You were, were ang- like, Luna, I was angry. I couldn't. Nope, we're done. <laughs> <laughs> like no, but but give me another chance. It's like Shin, you tried to blow up my mobile suit. No, I'm I, while I was in it. No, I'm good. Leave. Oh man, but yeah. Uh, Shin bashing aside. Um, so we will save uh Amuro versus Shin in uh the next episode. Um, so moving on to our main topic, uh, it's another series retrospective. It is. Of Gundam the Origin. Um, so, Edwin, since you are UC aficionado, you go first. Um, I haven't watched rewatched in a while, but I, I watched okay. them. I watched them as they came out. Okay. Um, and even now, I can actually now that I think about it, I might go back and watch them again because they're on Netflix, Hulu. Definitely, I know they're on Hulu. Yeah. But they're that's good. That's how I watched it. 
Same. Yeah, it's, it's it's a fantastic show, and if you know the lore and you're looking at things, it's like because I remember I was watching it the first episode back <clears> in 2014 uh, with my friend Gary, and I was looking at it and um, it was showing oh like a, a Zeon Daikun. I'm like oh my god that's that's him. That's and then, Daddy. And and I'm like wow that's and oh there's Casval and oh my god oh my lord and then um. And then it's like, yeah, you know, and then there's, then I'm like, oh my God, there's Degwin. Okay. And then, yeah. oh, there's Garen. Oh, Garen. there's, 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 oh, and there's, oh, 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 okay. There's Cassilia. Oh, and then there's Garma. And I'm like, wow. Okay. They have everybody here. Then there's Rambo um, <laughs> And it shows, you know, how everyone, it shows the origins of the Black Tri-Stars, which is cool. And so it shows how everything started, you know, and, um, even how it ends, it's like, you know, it shows the, the Battle of Loom. Yeah. Where, you know, Shar gets his, and, and I think I think he destroyed five um, battleships. And he yeah, destroyed five. five battleships to get that uh, the Red Comet. But I think he destroyed five. But it shows the origins of mobile suits, how they were built. It went into detail about the technical specifications of the, the, um, the reactor. Because I've always been curious as to how they designed and built the reactor for a mobile suit. For a mobile mm-hmm. Um, because that's just me. I'm just like, okay, you took a fusion reactor and you 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 um, you compressed it. I'm like, how the hell did you do that? And they were talking about that, and I'm like, oh, this is great. Like they, the people who made it, said we're gonna take everything from the original Mobile Suit Gundam and we're gonna answer every single question. And I respect the hell out of that because that was made for Gundam fans, and we're just like, this answers everything. It explains everything. It, it even shows. It even kind of turns you against the Federation when you see what was actually going on. Yeah, and totally. You really, and you're looking at it, you're just like, oh my god. And you think, yeah, if I was Zeon, I'd probably rise up too. Yeah. Yeah, I can, I can see, I can see this happening. So it really shows you, you know, the mentality of the Xeon. And when you watch the series, it gives you, it shows like, they're like, oh, yeah, let's drop a colony on them and let's do this, let's do that. It's like, well, you guys have been impressed for a while. Um, Ooh, that, speaking of that, the colony that they dropped, that was, oh, that was hard to. Yeah, that was bad. That was that, hard to. That, that was bad. Sit through, like. Like yeah. when it showed that random couple, like, like uh, they were like, "Oh yeah, we're gonna go to Earth together and see, go to Japan," and then like, "Oh no, you're not, you're not." And it and it showed like how they um how they were saying like and during it was I think that was Operation British, how yeah. and and it was how the lore was like, yeah, Zeon got the colony, they gassed it, and, oh. then, and then they dropped it. And literally in the show, you show them gassing the colony and dropping it. And it's like oh, you, was... you you literally just showed how Genocide. the one war started. You know, yeah. you pretty much showed like the opening scene from the Mobile Suit Gundam. Oh yeah, the colony hit Sydney. We we got to freaking see it. That and it's was like just... this is like oh my god, this is this is the like if you were to do a prequel to a, a series it is one of the best prequels i've ever seen because if you know gundam and you watch yep. this thing and the the fact that the damn thing they they pretty much did what what rogue one did it ends right as the, the series begins yes and you just got to respect that i mean you see mm-hmm. amro coming and you see the origins of the v project it's fantastic and, and they, i yeah. i can sing his phrases enough it's it's a it's it looks good it is good um, it shows, you know, even it shows the full development of the suit. It shows them working through different. It, it's it's complete. And I don't think I would have loved to see more mobile suit battles. That's my only. Yeah, that was but, my only gripe with the series. Like but for consider- newcomers into Gundam. Yeah, I as agree. much as I want to say watch this first. Watch the original Mobile Suit Gundam first and then the origin because there is not a lot of Mobile Suit battles. Right. So. But for what it was, it was like, oh, there's not much action. Well, there, okay, there's action. Um, there's a lot of setup. Yeah, and when you look at it and you're like, okay, not a lot of action, a lot of setup, but for what they were trying to say in their story, they nailed it. Yes. Because yeah. it, it because it, I mean, for me personally, I was watching. I'm like, well, shit. I, 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 I kind of want to watch the original Gundam now. <laughs> I want to rewatch it. it. Yeah, let's you know, and then 
And I did. I went ahead and rewatched because I have I um when I used to work at Fry's, um my first week there, I went in the back and I was organizing stuff and I found I I kid you not, guys, I found a box and it was the box of Gundam. It had in D V D form, it had the entire Mobile Suit Gundam series, the original Mobile Suit Gundam in a box. All of them lined up. Damn. And I, I grabbed that box and I was like, mine. And I bought it that same day. So I went back after I watched it all those years ago and I I cracked out my DVDs and I watched every single one of them and it gave me a new appreciation for the series. And I'm just like, it's amazing how you can make a series in the 80s and then you do the origin story like 30 years, 30, 35 years later. Yeah. And you can still watch that and then walk right back into the 80s and be like, OK, that's how it starts. I know everything that just happened leading up to that. Mm hmm. So it it it's 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 perf it's one of the most perfect prequels I've ever seen honestly. To make an analogy of uh, how important the origin is to uh, 0079, um, this is like they're the equivalent to Clone Wars to the prequel trilogy of Star Wars. Yes, you mm -hmm. are correct, sir. <laughs> so. Yeah, I'm, I'm really thinking about um, tracking down um, the the three movie trilogy uh, version of the original 0079 series. I'm thinking about doing that. You should. I mean, I actually went online and tried to find the Blu-ray version of, of 00, and that that those are kind of expensive now. Yeah, like, <clears throat> I think on uh, the right stuff, anime online shop they still have the 10th anniversary blu-ray set for double o hmm. I'm looking I, I missed out on the gundam wing one and i totally regret it <laughs> i feel you that's what i'm watching right now in the room um i'm on uh the third dv the third dvd of um of the second season of double o right now nice because right now the episode i just finished watching was when a new just turned um, a new just turned on a team. Okay. <clears throat> oh, uh, Gil, um, really yeah. quick. Um, since we talked about Double O previously, just to go on a side note, um, what did you think of the Throne Gundams? I thought they were pretty badass, though. Like, um, yeah, they were really short lived, but yeah. I wish they would stay around longer, and I regret not buying the high-grade uh, Throne Irons because that one was my favorite of the three. Yeah, I, I like their design. I mean, what they could do was just awesome, you know? Oh, their, but... their link-up attack was so cool. Like, you link all three of them together, and then they make a bigger beam cannon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that thing just, it went, it went on, they went on a rampage when they linked up like that, so. That was their power yeah. moment. <laughs> 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 they made the freaking power blaster. <laughs> power oh man, sword. the directors of Double Over like, man, this would be a good hit in the West. What's something that they like? Oh, they like Power Rangers. What? Oh yeah, uh, Jude Ranger, right? Yeah, the, the power blaster. Okay, we'll put that in our series. Pretty much. Power lands. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> We're actually like designing. Um, we're actually designing a power blaster for our D and D game. Uh, that oh jeez. <laughs> um, yeah, we're we're trying to find a way to make a device that we can combine all of our powers into, and we're gonna we're gonna like. Oh, you mean like the Captain Planet rings? <laughs> no, not like the Captain Planet rings. But we're gonna make a device where we we're gonna hold it, and then we're gonna like you know link up like Power Rangers do, and then we're gonna make it fire and blow something up because we can nice but um yeah going back to gundam the origin like um i was for one thing uh towards the end of the series i was not expecting a musical number by Hamon. <laughs> i was like ah okay i don't remember that it was i, I think it was in episode five toward the end yeah like that's a, that's after a uh, translation. after Haman and uh, uh, before Haman and Rambaral leave the the club that they that they frequent. So yeah, that was that was interesting. Um, 
I think out of the entire series, aside from Char being my favorite character, my second favorite character would have to be Ramba Rall. Like, <laughs> he's just an like, overall nice guy. Yeah, and I was just like, when uh, he told Dozel to basically like to piss off, like when he was gonna say, "Oh, I want you in charge of dropping this colony," he's like, "Hell no, I'm not." Yeah, he stood up right there. He said, "Yeah, exactly. Like, no, you, I'm not gonna do it." And he walked out. And he didn't. He knew he was gonna get demoted, and you know, he ended up still getting demoted. But he yeah. he was he had a conscience about his yeah. his uh his feelings, you know. And he said, "Nope." Like, which which explains why he was in the desert when we first meet him. Yeah, like I thought, like all this time, like before the origin came out, I thought he was just on like his own separate sect of uh, Zeon, like, but that didn't interact with the zombies because we didn't really see much of that at all. And now with the origin, there's good reason. Yeah. Um, in terms of uh. Uh, the zombies, though, I hate Dozel, man. Like, he has his lovable moments. <laughs> like, but uh, it made me hate Cassilia Zavi and Giran Zavi even more. <laughs> the the Zavi family in itself, I mean, they were just, uh, I mean, <clears throat> it was it, it was Giran and Cassilia were the ones who were just, first of all, they're evil as hell. Yeah. And they're, pushing everything through and then Degwin is just like well yeah it's necessary but I'm old and tired and um then the war starts and he's like oh lord I'm too old for this shit (laughs) and and honestly if you look at how he was in there and look at how he is in the series he's just at one point he's like yeah I'm tired of the war uh call uh uh you know what's his name I can't even think of his name right now um God, I I feel I forgot. Oh, with the Federation, I'm have, I'm uh, General Degman right now. Name with General Revel. He's like, yeah, call General Revel, and we're gonna meet up. And when, what does Garen do? Blow them both up. <sighs> Freaking like, Garen. Okay, and and like Garen was just psychotic, and is like, no, we're gonna we're gonna take over everything. We're gonna kill everyone. I'm like, oh boy. Yeah, he was on the whole. You know, he was in the shoot him genocide category. Yeah, of everyone. And I'm like, even Degwin, like, to a point, is like, dude, you need to stop. <laughs> and he was just, our own people. You need to stop. And then, and then Garen was just like, no, Degwin was like, son, you must stop. And Garen's like, no. Well, son, you yeah. must stop. And Garen's like, no. Oh, man. Now, the way you're saying no, I feel like editing in, like, just that scene from, from what we're talking about, Degwin telling... Uh, gearing to stop. I'm just gonna put in Palpatine going, No, no, <laughs> you <laughs> will <laughs> die. <laughs> He's like, Do I need you to stop, son? No, you stop. Stop what? Living. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that made me appreciate um, Castilia's betrayal in, in the original series even more. So it's like, Yeah, I hate gearing with a passion. <laughs> Giren sucks. <laughs> yeah, Giren. It's. I mean, good. Don't get good character development. Fantastic character yeah, development. Yeah, and good know. voice acting on both the dub and the sub. But God, I hate the character. <laughs> like, I don't see any redeeming things in him that would make me like the character. He was designed to be the big bad guy. And... He's space Hitler. More that he's more of a space Hitler than Frieza was. That is actually true. He is space Hitler. Yep. Yeah, that's that's kind of if you look at the if you really look at the 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 Prince Valley of Zeon, it's very Nazi based. I mean, to look a at degree. their flag. Their flag. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I know. That picked up. Crazy to the untrained I eye. That. I was like, whoa. To the untrained eye. If they saw that sticker on a car, they would call him up quick. Yeah. That's that's what made me not want to put a Xeon sticker on my car. <laughs> yeah, it, it, especially nowadays. It's like, yeah, oh, careful, boy. careful what you put on your car, because, you know, that could be bad for everybody. At least with the Federation logo, you could th- it could pass for, like, a U.S. logo. <laughs> you could get away with it, yes. 
Let's see. Gundam logos that could pass on cars nowadays without getting shifty looks. For Earth Federation, Celestial Being. Um, Preventer Wind. <laughs> uh, Oz. Did Oz have a logo? Yeah, the O and a Z. No, like, uh, besides that, did they have, a, like, anything like a bird or anything? Um, no. I mean, you had the Romerfeller Foundation. That was a lion. Oh, okay, a lion. Did the did the bird on the tall geese's shield mean anything? Mm, I don't know. That may have been the Earth. I don't know. I'd have to really look into that. I could have sworn that was Oz. Mm, you know what? Now I'm actually pretty curious. I am going to look this up now. Okay, let's look that up really quick. <laughs> uh, Oz Federation... Okay logo yeah the oh it is the oz yeah it is the bird i think was just something else i think Um, it's probably just for the tall geese huh yeah yeah okay never mind all righty so oz yeah yeah, you could get away with that because like oh what does oz stand for oh let me explain instead of like having like instant like hey get that man (laughs) it's like organization of the zodiac what does that mean uh, military in an anime, <laughs> and that's the point. Where I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> yeah, just alone, the abbreviation of ZAF is just so confusing. Zodiac Alliance of Freedom Treaty. What does what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, I, I think it's all the plants came together and they formed a treaty. Um. And, but then again, you have like you know you have the Atlantic Federation, and they have their Omni Enforcer and all that kind of, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, very true. Bird on the... Alrighty, so going back to Gundam: The Origin, uh, favorite mobile suit from this uh, franchise, or from the series of the franchise. You already know what my answer is. <laughs> the Guff prototype. That comes at number two. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, it's it's the the honestly oh, just black seeing, tristar. Huh. No, it's Char. Just seeing okay. Just, just seeing the red comet, like just seeing In that full suit. Full modern animation glory. Yeah, I mean, because you actually got it. I mean, actually going back into the series, it even shows like, oh, why is Char's thing? Oh yeah, we took the limiters off the thing. It's like, oh, okay. Yeah, he disabled the limiter, yeah. and, and that like, was such a cool scene. Yeah, and it's like, oh yeah, that's why the thing moves like three to four times speed, and that's the reason. It's he disengaged the performance limiters. I'm like, wow, that's once again goes into how much freaking detail they put into the series. Um, oh, but just um, Char moving, like you say, with modern technology, seeing how fast he's moving, how the suit moves, and everything. I'm like, it makes you love and appreciate his character and his suit even more. Um, I mean, it it it. it looks fantastic and that's where like you know because you know i've always been now i'm I'm watching more of the anime but i've always been more of just like the the actual model building side of things and that's why like the zaku itself never attracted me that's why you know like you've always heard you know my opinion on it but watching the actually like the animation like how how the mobile suit like flowed and like how the red comet moved well first of all i I love red you know and then seeing it just move that's why i was like wow i really like this mobile suit and then you know i started doing more searches for like other models of it and and that's where I ran into that that uh, one model like the paint scheme on on it is so great. I have to, I'll send it on on the chat so you can see it too, Edwin. Uh-huh. Um, but but I I loved it. Um, now when I started looking up like just you know just the like the real grade version of the Zaku, I was kind of disappointed because the paint seems muted versus what I'm looking at on the TV. The TV is vibrant i love the red that they use on the tv versus if you guys look at the box art of the of the real grade yeah the real grade yeah yeah um that's because um they kind of went with the 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 color palette used in the original anime okay yeah because uh shars mobile suits were not just 
that vibrant crimson red. They were a yeah. mix of reds and pinks. Okay. Back in the day. So now um, they made it almost like a uniform red, but with the torso just being a dark red. Uh huh. So that's why the real grade Zaku 2 has looks the way it does. Is that they went with the source material, the original anime, and then yeah. they did yeah. more color part separation. I would Which is why I'm favorite. most likely gonna pick the the high grade origin version of the Zaku 2. Uh -huh. um, as much as I do like the original pink color scheme, like lightish pink to dark red on the original anime, um, it's that newer the origin look of this Zaku that looks a lot more tougher. You know. Yeah. So yeah, that's my stance on the on the color. Um, but, so, in a nutshell, Gil, your favorite mobile suit from this series is Sharzaku? Oh, yeah, dude. Just the way that it looked and it moved, I was, like, it, you know, it converted me, you know? One of us. One of us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am, I am so gratified to hear that, Gil. Um, that this makes me you have no idea how happy this makes me because I was I was questioning your damn sanity so um, I, I, I'm glad to, to see that you have you've you've turned away from the darkness and you've embraced the light I will never embrace the so-called light you guys have for the strike freedom well 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 you know I'll take one out of two you know <laughs> I mean I can't convert everyone and some people you know yeah, yeah, I've known you long enough, Marvin. There are some things about you I just don't get, and that's one of them. <laughs> but hey, I love Zaku's more than the Strike Freedom, so yeah, that outweighs yeah. it. Yeah, it balances it, it. It balances out in a strange <laughs> way, so that's why I, I, I tolerate your existence. <laughs> Marvin, the um the the high grade that you're talking about um for the Zaku is that a 144 scale? Yes. Okay. I'm looking at it right now, so I, I see it. Um, yeah, I it's like. Sold out on a uh, on new type, surprisingly still. Um, oh wow. Yeah, that's how popular Char is, dude. He's more popular than the RX-78. I mean, there's still tons of RX-78 available on new type, but mm -hmm. Char Zaku is sold out. <laughs> I think when it comes to Char and between Char and um. Amro is that you have RX-78, which is a Gundam, which is a cool suit in general, but you can't really um, vibe with the pilot. You can't really, you know, understand the pilot. But then you get Char, you got a badass suit with a badass character. You're yep. like, okay, I can get with Char. I get where he's coming from. Yep, yep. So then let's go Let's go a little bit into, into the character, which, like, I understand, like, he's a badass. He has skills and everything. But one thing, like, I posted in the chat, I was like, Okay, so where did he get, like, almost like the superpower, you know? Um, because there was that one scene where, um, where like, like the, four, the four kids from the, from the academy come up to him. And then he basically, like, just touches the, the big bully's hand. And the bully goes flying into, like, the bushes and everything. And I'm like... Okay, where did he pick up these these special powers, you know, so to say? Um, new types are pretty tricky to explain. Um, from my understanding, mostly new types are from space, the ones yep. that were born and raised in space. Um, they're sort of like the next evolutionary step of humanity. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Which is why the Earth Federation pissed their pants at Amuro based in uh, Zeta, mm -hmm. and um, because they fear what they don't understand. Uh, and then we found out why they really fear the new types and unicorn. Oh yeah, heck, they even made the unicorn, which is the designated as the new type killer. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it turns funnels against the its own pilots. That was pretty. Scary I, I saw that I crapped my pants. I'm like, oh my Poor god. Poor Marita. I that, she me... was, that was beautiful. Beautiful, but tragic to see. Yeah. She was so scared. I just want to be like, you poor bean, I want to hug you. <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, new types, um, they're 
most of their abilities are pretty much the same from my understanding. Uh, they have a heightened sense of uh, emotional empathy. They could sense people's emotions to a degree. Um, they could sort of like sense what's coming. That's why whenever and sometimes in Gundam, you hear that little ping sound when they seem shocked or surprised. And then you see yeah, that little yeah. flash of white on, on their forehead. That's them sensing stuff before it I, happens. I always thought that that was, well, kind of like that they had like that a mental connection with the other person that got the ping. Yes. So. Uh-huh. Uh, you'll see a lot more of that in the later episodes, Gilbert, of the original series when Amuro starts to awaken as a new type. But uh, yeah, Char pretty much got it early, I guess. Okay. Uh, mostly because of his uh, his genetics and stuff, because he was from space, and I guess my understanding is that like new types started becoming a thing in space once humans started to adapt to life in space or something. It's hard okay. to explain, really. <clears throat> but yes. Uh, the so-called powers, um, it's because Char is a new type. And uh, sort of like the the um, the connection in to seed with naturals and coordinators, the coordinators are somewhat genetically superior. And that's why the Earth, Fet the Earth Alliance in seed made those uh, extended guys, which are like the cyber new types, people who are originally human, but they were forced and... Uh, enhanced into into like sort of pseudo new types or coordinators but to a mentally uh, degrading degree well that pretty much explained everything marvin uh yeah that's In a confusing way <laughs> yeah basically new types are the it's the next evolution of the human race um it, it's kind of like it's what happens when humans go to space because I think by the time Origin starts, humans have been in space for nearly 100 years. Yes. Uh, yeah, because UC started when they went into space. Yeah, so they've been in space nearly 100 years. So uh, that's a human body evolving into being able to live in space. And you get some type of uh, extrasensory abilities to cope with the environment of space, which, you know, you apply that to a mobile suit and it pretty much turns into a whole weapon of mass destruction. Yeah. I like your explanation better, Edwin. Yours is like a textbook. <laughs> Mine is that meme of that dude from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, they both work. <laughs> Mine's all over the place and yours is like point A to B. <laughs> uh, yeah, I try. But then you give me enough a subject and I'll just become really long-winded. <laughs> um... Ah, let's see. New types in other series. Uh, okay, we went over um, the coordinators, of course. In Double O, there's innovators. Yeah. I don't think Wing had any. I no, think the... people in Wing were just badass. Yeah, and oh, no, 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 no. Um, it's people who have overcome the Zero system, so that makes Hiro and Zex the only new types, quote unquote, in Wing. Yeah, they were able to handle it mentally. So they they had I think they were just they had mental strength. I mean, physically yeah. all the all the Gundam pilots and everybody had 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 strength, but mentally mm -hmm. uh they were able to uh handle that. So, yeah, so mentally, yeah, they were uh they were stronger, much stronger. Yeah. Man, but Hito's physical strength, man. He survived like so many things. <laughs> oh yeah, he, I mean, if you really think about it, when um when his Gundam blew up, he he technically survived a nuclear explosion. Yeah. Um, oh man, the amount of radiation poisoning Hito must have. Seriously, yeah. I mean, he he jumps out of a building with no uh, parachute, nope. well, he sets did. his knee. <laughs> he did, but he barely used it. He pulled it too late. <laughs> Pretty much, and he sets his knee, and then he gets blown oh, up. Watch. And yeah, he uh, yeah, he's he's a very yeah. You know what? Hero's hero. That's that's just how he is. He hero does things. Yeah, but he, um, hero completes see. hero completes missions, and Setsuna wants to become a Gundams, and there you go. Yep. 
Let's see, what else? Uh, I didn't even talk about my favorite mobile suit from the series. Holy crap. <laughs> from from the origin. Uh, Sarzaki is my first. My second favorite has to be the prototype gun tank. <laughs> Um, we, we you talked about that one earlier. Huh? You were so fascinated by it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, and third has to be the prototype guff. Um, let's Fair see. Enough. We kind of went over our favorite characters. Um, oh, uh, I have to talk about this guy. Um, uh, is it was it Gaia that hated Char? Or was it Mash? I don't remember. It's it's one of the three. the The tallest one. It, it was the tallest of the three, though. The tallest dude. I th- it may have been Mash. Yeah, his salt levels to Char was just hilarious. Like, oh, I hate that guy. I'm like, well, if you're if you're as good as him, then you wouldn't hate him so much, would you? <laughs> was Burn. that one of the like the three like the three soldiers or whatever? Yeah, the, like the tri stars. Yeah. The tri star. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, I never liked the Tri-Stars that much in the original show. And then it's like, um, now looking at this, just how, like, their pettiness towards that, like, like, yeah, I don't like these guys. <laughs> well, yeah, because so they were petty. <laughs> they were the aces, and then Shard just walks in and says, yeah, you guys are trash. <laughs> well, yeah, Shard had the this. backbone to prove it. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I couldn't say, like, yeah, we're going to do this. We're, we're number one. We're, we're, we're chosen to do this. And then Carpenter's like, yeah, you guys are garbage. Um, get out. Yeah, that's what I like. Uh, I just laughed so much when Char, not Char, uh, or Tate. No, Gaia. Yeah, it was Gaia that gets all, like, all butthurt about Char on everything. <laughs> he was a very insecure man. And going like on about like Xeon itself, they're very like competitive with each other. So uh, Zeon like, in general or the Zabi family? Uh Zeon, like uh like like example, the Tristars are always trying to one up Char, but it's like they just can't. Yeah. It's well I mean you look at how the how the leaders are, it's like, you know, Zeon is like it's it's based off of merit. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so you do something awesome, you know, um, like, for example, um, you look at um, when Manofsky was trying to escape and um, when, um, you know, uh, the TriStars and Ramba came in and they were like, oh, OK, well, she died. But technically the mission was complete. And then Dozel was like, oh, OK, well, I need you to do this with this colony, which is like a promotion. And he's like, yeah. no, I don't want to do this. And it's like, oh, you don't want to do it. Oh, you're going to the desert. Because we literally do not see him again until, <laughs> until the until desert. desert. <laughs> and it's like, and you're like, and then you you watch the series and you're like, wow, he's a really great character, a really great pilot. Why, why is he uh in a desert? And then you find out, oh, okay, well, because he spoke his thoughts exactly, sadly. and they don't like that. And no. the fact that remember, you know, um, Ramba was, I, I don't think he was that high of a class. I don't yeah, think like um, they so always saw his the zombies always saw uh, Papa Rao uh, to be like a Federation sympathizer too. Yeah, well, he's very very outspoken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I was wondering when I first saw the origin, um, I was like, man, who's this old dude talking to Shar's mom? And it's like when he said Rao, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> And I was like, wait, that's not Ramba. And then Ramba just walks in all, like, happy and all, like, wow, this is a really different dude compared to what I saw in the desert. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So that's what made me like uh, uh, Ramba Rao even more. It's like, he's, out of all the Zeon characters, like, aside from Char, he's, like, relatable. He was a deep character and yeah. he was a very well written character in the Gundam series and then you see him how he became you're like well you know he's gonna die oh, excuse me. you know he's gonna die but you don't yeah. and you know how he's gonna die and then you see oh okay he's it makes you really feel his death a lot more when it happens yeah because Ramba is he's genuinely a nice guy He's a yep. really, really nice guy. 
Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Uh, so, what's our timestamp going on right now? Um, oh my God! I think it's literally. Been two hours. Yeah, two hours and about thirty more seconds. So, um, I think we covered all the aspects we have this time. Uh, we went into some good talks, and then we went on some good derailing talks. Yep. <laughs> But it was worth it. <laughs> um, so next time, we will be back on Monday, June 29th. Uh, perfect for about for the end of the month. Um, so we will see you all there. Um, I will incorporate what we've been working on in terms of Gunpla or video games or merchandise into the YouTube upload of this. This will be up on SoundCloud and Spotify around tomorrow. So... Uh, until then, uh, continue being safe, everyone. Uh, keep loving Gundam and all things. Um, this has been Off the Runner, a Gundam podcast. And signing off is Envious Marvin. This is Bucket Knight 359 Edwin. And DJ Provoke Gilbert. Alrighty, guys. Have a good one. Bye. Bye. Good, goodbye.